Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turnell, and this is the case of Real, Ch Real Martin and James Turner, both of whom have appeals going on in the Court of Appeal, except that Real Martin is having trouble getting his transcript dispensed with and had a hearing book before a judge, and James Turner, he had actually had a demand for transcripts to be done right. They weren't done right by the Ottawa court reporter, and he was still waiting on it. And somehow the man, the Crown managed to book his appeal without any of that information. Quite an irregularity. Here's the information on what happened. Court treats Martin and Turner appeals differently. So on October, on May 27, 2009, Real Martin was sent a letter by John Cronkamp senior legal officer of the appeal schedule unit for the Ontario Court of Appeal, saying, Notice of hearing! The court reporter's certificate indicating that you have ordered copies of the transcript required in the above titled proceedings has not been filed in accordance with the criminal appeal rules and the court's practice direction on timely hearing of criminal appeals dated February 18, 2003. Take notice that the court has directed that this appeal be scheduled for hearing in the status court of the Court of Appeal for Ontario on Wednesday, June 17th at 9 a.m. A court reporter's certificate may be filed in person at the Court of Appeal office or faxed prior to the hearing scheduled above. Unless the required certificate has been filed, the presiding judge may direct that the matter be placed before a purge court to be dismissed as an abandoned appeal or make such order as the justice may deem appropriate for the receipt or preparation of materials required for the timely hearing of the appeal. Filing of the required certificate releases the parties from attending the hearing. If a personal attendance is not possible, alternate arrangements can be made for a hearing by telephone. Dated Wednesday, May 27, 2009, John Cromkamp. So, as Real Martin's agent since his bust during the Parker period of invalidity in 2003, I'm organizing his appeal. So I faxed back from John Turmel, <clears throat> June 12th, Appeal Scheduling Unit, read the hearing June 17th for Real Martin. I'm the agent for Real Martin in charge of preparing his appeal documents. The court has directed that this appeal be scheduled for hearing in the status court of the Court of Appeal of Ontario on June 17th regarding the failure to file the court reporter certificate. <clears throat> Appellant, in seeking an extension of time for being one day late, sought to dispense with the transcripts, since this is a question of pure law and the transcripts are not necessary. Before Appellant does seek a court reporter's certificate from the Cochrane Courthouse 300 kilometers away, Appellant once again asks the court to dispense with the transcript. Appellant cannot come to Toronto for the hearing would like to conduct the hearing by conference call. Appellant lives without electricity or phone and will have to take the call at a friend's place at 9.05 and I gave the number. Appellant speaks almost no English and would prefer that the hearing be conducted in French. The only issue is whether the transcript can be dispensed with before the appellant's factum can be filed. Arrangements to a certain conference call may be made by contacting John Turmel. Yours truly, Agent for Real Martin. <clears throat> So this is what happens when you have a delay in the preparation of your appeal. You explain to a status court judge what the problem is, and if it's not a good enough reason, he passes it over to the required three judges of the purge court for it to be dismissed as abandoned for lack of material. If the justice insists, Rayal will have to go to the Corcoran, Cochrane Courthouse 300, 300 kilometers away from Coppell and put a down payment on the transcript while he's not going to be referring to anyway. But that's all it takes to get the Real Martin appeal back on track, a court reporter's certificate that he has ordered the transcript. Then both sides file their factum. The appellant then files a certificate of perfection to book an appeal date. <clears throat> Many who were following our Big Five appeals for Parker, Turmel, and Paquette in 2003 will remember the serendipity story where the Crown couldn't get their Letterman appeal hearing scheduled before the six months ran out without our Certificate of Perfection. It was serendipitous that the Crown suddenly refused to pick up the tab when I had promised Justice Shadow that we'd produce them, except we couldn't afford the $350 filing fee, so we couldn't file it. And the Crown didn't, didn't get their hearing scheduled and had to ask Carthy J for an extension of time that he later denied because my chortling at them at my website wasn't good enough reason for it. Ha ha ha! What fun that was! Search for serendipity around the mid-2003. 
This is important because James Turner is being railroaded by the same Court of Appeal with the same Certificate of Perfection issue. He's been waiting for the transcript that the Court of Appeal Registry insists upon after the Ottawa office didn't do it right the first time so he can send it in with his factum. Then after the Crown files their factum, he files his Certificate of Perfection and the appealing gets booked. It seems the Crown found a backroom way of getting the need to have a Certificate of Perfection before you can schedule an appeal that has been problematic back in 2003 and applies to Rayana's appeal too because James suddenly received notice that his appeal was being heard without the required transcript, without either factum, and without the Certificate of Perfection. Here is the Turner correspondence leading up to the back room sidestep of the Court of Appeal rules. Court of Appeal for Ontario Registrar's Office, April 1st. Dear Mr. Turner, <clears throat> our office is in receipt of your material for the appeal noted in the line above. The transcripts could not be appealed for the following reasons. It is missing the court reporter's signature. Dot, 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 dot. So anyway, he asked for it again. We find out the court reporters died. Funny story. But anyway. Then suddenly he got a letter from the Crown Attorney's Office dated May 29th that said the hearing Tuesday, June 16th, Court of Appeal of Ontario in Kingston, plead be advised that your appeal has been listed for hearing on June 16th, as noted above. Endorsed herewith, please find a copy of the appeal book we have prepared in this matter. Please note you're responsible for making your own transportation arrangements to your scheduled hearing, Kelly Lowe, Senior Paralegal. So, James Turner wrote back, and to, you get Thompson at the Court of Appeal, said, as to your letter dated April the 1st, stating that I had to return the transcripts due to multiple mistakes and get them fixed, I'm still awaiting transcripts, but the reporter is seriously ill, and that is causing the delay. Once I receive them, I wish to file a factum before any hearing date can be set and heard, and I also request that my appeal be heard in Toronto. On June the 1st, I received my appeal book from the Crown's office and a letter stating my appeal date's been scheduled for June 16th in Kingston. But until I receive my transcripts, I can't file my factum. And again, my appeal was accepted in Toronto, and that's where I wish to have it heard because my agent, John Turmel, resides near there, and it would be harder for him to commute to Kingston to speak on my behalf. So my request at this time for June 16th date to be put off pending my transcripts and the filing of my factum and that my case be heard in Toronto. As to your previous instructions, the letter dated April 1st, it's attached with the letter from the Crown dated May 29th, James Turner. So, then he wrote to Kelly Lowe, Dear Kelly, attaches the letter I got dated April 1st, and that's why I haven't filed my factum. I figured I could file my factum at the same time as I submitted the transcripts that I'm waiting for. That's why June 16th is a little sudden. Thanks, Jim T. Well, since James sent a copy to the registrar, the Crown wrote back and to the registrar, Dear Miss Wynn, thank you for forwarding a copy of Mr. Turner's email to our office. The Crown is opposed to the adjournment requested by Mr. Turmel. The appeal book is complete and contains all the material required for the hearing of this appeal. I've confirmed with Crown counsel on the application below that there is no evidence heard in the court below. And therefore, the transcript Mr. Turner is waiting for would simply be submissions. Same thing as Ariane Martin's case and all our others before, right? Submissions are not normally part of the required transcripts for an appeal, unless otherwise by the court. Yeah, we know, but we had to order them anyway. Say, and I said, hey, it wasn't James who said the transcripts are required. It was the registrar. Now the Crown is telling the registrar how to do their job. So the crowd continues, Mr. Turner filed this notice of appeal more than four months ago. He has had sufficient time to prepare a factum, had he any serious intent to do so. In the court below, he simply copied and submitted materials, including a factum that had been used by John Turmel in another case. And I said, sure, he's going to be playing the same aces as played by Turmel. Maybe better. Those materials are, not, are contained in the appeal book that's been filed. Mr. Turner also asked that his appeal be moved to Toronto in order for his agent to appear and speak on his behalf. Mr. Turmel is not licensed by the Law Society of Upper Canada and unless otherwise accepted under the Law Society Act, therefore cannot provide legal services in the province of Ontario. While we have no preference as to whether this appeal is heard in Toronto or Kingston, I understand that the Toronto list this month is very lengthy and that this matter can be more conveniently heard in Kingston. 
It is of some importance that this appeal not be delayed. Mr. Turner's charges were laid in October 2006. Mr. Martin's charges were laid in 2003. And uh, his preliminary inquiry has twice been delayed. And because of the Crown asking for delays, not James. They wanted to wait for the long decision. The preliminary inquiry is now scheduled for June 26th. It would therefore be preferable if the appeal was heard on June 16th. As scheduled, thank you, Maureen J. McGuire, Crown Counsel.